welcome to the 41st lecture in the course engineering electromagnetics. Today we have the last lecture of this course uh, related to the uh, last major topic of discussion that is uh, radiation. The topics for discussion today are the two element arrays and the Yagi Uda array. Before we plunge into discussing the behavior of two element arrays, uh, it will be useful to consider uh, first what are arrays and then why one may need to use arrays. An antenna array is a system of similar antennas which are similarly oriented. <coughs> that is very simply put an array. There could be minor differences in the elements of an array as we will see in the example of the Yagi Uda array, but otherwise by definition an antenna array is a system of similar antennas which are similarly oriented. Now, why would we need a number of antennas which are similar in nature? The reason for this is as follows. We have seen the behavior particularly with respect to the radiation pattern of the simple antennas such as the electrically small antennas and the half wave dipole antenna. And we have seen that the radiation pattern of these antennas uh, is not very directional. In fact, in the plane uh, perpendicular to the antenna axis, the uh, radiation is non directional, it is completely uniform in all directions. In fact, in that plane, uh, the plane normal to the antenna axis for all these linear antennas, the antenna can be considered to be radiating uniformly in all directions that is it can be called an isotropic radiator. Okay. Although uh, uh, in reality there is no radiator which radiates uniformly in the three dimensional space around it. For example, even the Hertzian dipole the alternating current element which is perhaps the smallest uh, radiating entity we could consider does not radiate uniformly in the three dimensional space around it. But if we consider the plane normal to the antenna axis, the radiation is uniform there. For many purposes, this may not be adequate. We may like to enhance the radiation in certain directions and by the same logic, we may like to suppress the radiation in other directions for whatever purpose this will work for transmission as well as for reception. Now, we have seen that at low frequencies where also one needs to use antennas many times, it is not possible to increase the antenna size in terms of wavelength because of uh, mechanical constraints. And the single antenna has a very uh, 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 a radiation pattern which is not very directional this aspect can be improved upon by putting uh, a number of antennas together. That uh, uh, system where we put a number of antennas together becomes an array. All right. So, this is where the arrays come into picture. We improve the characteristics, improve upon the characteristics of a single antenna by putting in similar antennas. This improvement could be of different uh, types. Here, what we are saying is that uh, one improvement which is usually sought is the improvement in the radiation pattern. In particular to make the radiation pattern more directional, we may put more than one antenna together. Obviously, the simplest array or the simplest arrays would be two element arrays, where we put two antennas which are otherwise identical together. All right. The system of uh, two antennas may appear 
like this. Okay. Now, what we are considering here uh, are two antennas labeled as antenna 0 and antenna 1. The separation between these antennas is d, right. Antenna 1, uh, antenna 0 is carrying a current I naught and in general let antenna 1 carry a current I 1 which is related to the current I naught in this manner that is I 1 is k I naught at an angle alpha. Okay. That is notionally the amplitude is different by a factor of k and the phase of antenna 1 is ahead of the phase of antenna 0 by an angle alpha. Okay. This is notional because depending on the value of alpha it may be ahead in phase actually or may be lagging in phase. To begin with to keep the consideration simple we consider that these antennas are isotropic radiators that is if we put any one of them alone it will radiate uniformly in the three dimensional space around it. Okay. This is a hypothesis it does not work in practice as we have just seen, but uh, in a limited sense for example, the plane perpendicular to the uh, axis of the linear antennas the antenna can be considered an isotropic radiator. So, we could perhaps say that these are linear antennas which are oriented normal to this plane of display. Then these could be dipole antennas also and then in this plane they are radiating uh, individually they are radiating isotropically or uniform. One can see that if we consider some point P uh, and we consider the total field because of the system due to the due to both the antennas then because of the path difference to the point P from these two antennas they will arise phase difference which phase difference will depend upon the orientation of this uh, point P alright and therefore we can foresee a kind of an interference pattern. So, individually these may radiate uniformly the radiation pattern may be a circle, but put together we expect some uh, a different pattern more interesting patterns. How do we go about this? Uh, one does make some uh, approximations which are uh, applicable as far as the far field is concerned as long as the point P is at a large distance from the system we can make the following approximations. For example, for a distant point P as far as the magnitude of the contribution of these two radiators at this point P is concerned uh, it will be different by the factors R 1 and R naught the far field varies as 1 by R strictly speaking the amplitudes are different, but for a distant point P the difference in these uh, distances and therefore the difference in the amplitudes is going to be really of no consequence and therefore we say that as far as the magnitude factor is concerned we can say that R 1 and R naught are virtually the same. However, the phase cannot be uh, ignored the phase differences cannot be ignored and uh, we say that for the phase factor we consider the path difference uh, in these two paths such that R 1 is equal to R naught minus d cos phi where phi uh, uh, angle has been shown in the diagram. Okay. So, corresponding to this path difference there will be a phase difference which will arise which can be put down as beta d cos phi the phase difference the path difference is simply d cos phi r naught minus r 1 is simply d cos phi corresponding to this the phase difference is going to be beta times d cos phi beta being the phase shift constant the phase uh, the phase shift per unit length. This is the phase 
difference simply because of the path difference. In addition we are saying that the current in antenna 1 uh, notionally leads the current in antenna 0 by an angle alpha which also should be taken into account. Therefore, the overall phase difference uh, becomes beta d cos phi plus alpha which we represent as psi. Okay. In most uh, array theory considerations you will find that the phase difference is represented by this uh, symbol psi. So, with this kind of phase difference and the amplitudes being more or less similar we want to consider the total field at the point p. Actually it should be a vector addition and a phasor addition. Right? However, since the point p is assumed to be located far away the vectors the electric field vectors due to these two antennas will be more or less uh, co directional. Okay. So, vector addition will be uh, of really no significance, but the phasor addition taking the phase difference into account will certainly have to be done and therefore, we can proceed further and say that the total field is given by E equal to E naught times 1 plus k times E to the power j psi. The uh, reason for these factors should be obvious k is the uh, factor by which the amplitudes are different and psi is the phase difference that we have just uh, evolved. And therefore, this is the total uh, electric field and as I said we do not really need to consider the vector addition because they are both in the same direction and the magnitude of the total field can be found out by considering the magnitude of the uh, expression on the right hand side. All right. Conceptually that is how it works. Now, this can be developed further and we can find out the magnitude corresponding to this factor. What we have is E t which is E naught and considering that E naught is real we have the magnitude of 1 plus k times cos psi plus j k sin psi all right which is equal to e naught and then we have the square root of 1 plus k cos psi whole squared plus k squared sin squared psi, which simplifies to E naught into 1 plus k square and then twice k cosine psi. Now, the system of two elements the two element array uh, for this uh, a very important case uh, special case is that where k is equal to 1, where the currents are uh, they have the same amplitude in the two antennas, but the phases could be different for which case it is simply E naught into square root of 2 plus 2 cosine psi all right, which can be simplified by considering the uh, by expanding cosine of psi. Uh, in terms of half its angle and then one gets a very simple 
expression namely E t becomes twice E naught cosine of psi by 2 for of course, k equal to 1, where what is psi? Psi is the phase difference that we had identified beta d cos phi plus alpha and therefore, the argument of the cosine function becomes pi d cos phi by lambda <coughs> recognizing that beta is 2 pi by lambda plus alpha by 2. Now, this process that we have uh, followed uh, can be uh, represented uh, by this kind of phasor addition of the field due to the 0th antenna and the field due to the first antenna. In general, it is E 1, but for the kind of current we put down k times i naught at an angle alpha, uh, it becomes like this and psi is the overall phase difference that we have taken into account. And then you see that E t is the uh, whole square root of the whole square of this term plus square of this term, that is precisely the mathematical uh, procedure that was coming up. Now, this is the final expression that one can work with and for the sake of illustration, what is the kind of effect of putting these two uh, antenna limits together uh, with similar uh, excitation, but with different phases one can uh, see by considering different uh, simple cases involving two element arrays. For example, uh, we could have a situation where d is lambda by 2, separation is half a wavelength and let us say alpha is 0 all right. and therefore, this factor, this factor is what is going to govern the radiation pattern uh, becomes simply uh, pi cos phi by 2 for alpha equal to 0. Uh, one can put it down here. for a two element array with d equal to lambda by 2 and alpha equal to 0, E t is going to be let us say proportional to cosine of pi by 2 cos of phi. So, uh, phi is the angle uh, that we had shown the uh, radius vector to the point P makes with the line joining the two antenna elements all right. and therefore, one can give uh, different values of phi and find out what is this factor and then plot this as a function of phi. This has been done here in this diagram and uh, let me put it at the center, so that perhaps it can be uh, enlarged. Okay. We are right now looking at this pattern only all right, for d equal to lambda by 2 and alpha equal to 0 and we see a pattern which is roughly a figure of 8. As long as we continue to assume that the antennas are isotropic radiators this is the kind of pattern we will get in any plane containing this line joining the two antennas. right? But if in a certain plane the antennas themselves are directional, that directional radiation pattern will become in some manner superimposed over this pattern. All right? So, that consideration we are not going into at the moment. So, let us say that in any plane passing through uh, containing the line joining these two antennas, uh, if we assume that these antennas are isotropic radiators, this is the kind of pattern one will get. Okay. Individually, each one had a radiation pattern which was a circle, but when we put these two together like this with this kind of phasing, the pattern becomes more directional. This we said was one of the objectives of arraying the antenna elements. So, that is being achieved. One can see by a simple logic that yes, this is how the 
pattern should be for example, in this direction either way the antennas have the same uh, phase of excitation, but the spacing is lambda by 2 and therefore, the radiation becomes out of phase along this line. Okay. So, in this direction phi equal to 0 or phi equal to 180 degrees there is no radiation which is how the result is coming out. In the plane of symmetry since the excitations are in phase the radiations add together they interfere constructively so to say and therefore, we get a maximum. Okay. So, even without such an expression one can figure out these simple things that where the radiation will be minimum where it will be maximum and particularly for the case of k equal to 1 where there will be complete cancellation uh, if it occurs in certain directions the patterns can be made out uh, uh, fairly uh, simply. Now, of course, uh, the requirement may be different we may require the maximum radiation in a in some other direction that there is a very simple uh, uh, solution to that. Let us say we change the phasing keep the same separation and now that is d equal to lambda by 2 and alpha becomes pi or 180 degrees. In which case you will see that uh, for d equal to lambda by 2 and alpha equal to 180 degrees we will have a total electric field magnitude which is proportional to sin of pi by 2 cos of phi and the pattern when plotted still looks like a figure of 8, but with respect to this it is rotated by 90 degrees, but it is not exactly a 90 degree rotation one can make out that if you change phi by 90 degrees you do not get this expression. So, that difference is there, but uh, qualitatively loosely speaking it is remains a figure of 8, but the maximum direction direction of maximum radiation has now become different and once again it can be uh, explained or understood in uh, similar terms. In this direction the spacing is lambda by 2, so that leads to a phase difference of pi radians. In addition, there is a phase difference of pi radiation. Therefore, in either direction, the radiation interferes constructively. Whereas, in the plane of symmetry, since the excitations are out of phase, they interfere destructively. All right. Therefore, we get this kind of a pattern. Of course, these are uh, two very simple situations. Other situations are equally well possible. For example, one can have a situation where d is lambda by 4 the spacing between the elements and alpha the phase uh, uh, by which the antenna 1 excitation leads antenna 0 excitation and that is minus 90 degrees. Therefore, actually the antenna 1 excitation is lagging in phase by 90 degrees. And then one gets a pattern which is uh, typically that of a cardioid when the excitations are uh, of equal amplitude and with this kind of phase. Here again one can uh, con consider now this kind of patterns are unidirectional in the sense that there is radiation in this direction say forward direction, but no radiation in the backward direction okay, which becomes a, uh, a case of uh, practical importance. How is radiation there considerable radiation uh, there in this direction in the phi equal to 0 degree direction and no radiation in this direction. <coughs> Let us see this element when we consider this direction is ahead by a distance lambda by 4 which corresponds to a phase difference of pi by 2 uh, radians or 90 degrees. So, just because of the spacing the radiation from this is ahead in phase in this direction. Now, the phase of this is minus 90 degrees and therefore, that phase difference is completely nullified and in this direction the uh, fields or the radiation interferes constructively. <coughs> that does not happen when we reverse the direction 
okay, there the phase differences accumulate to give us an overall phase difference of pi radians as you can see very simply pi radians are 180 degrees. So, therefore, in this direction there is no radiation and uh, there is uh, there are intermediate values of the total field in other directions which one can make out by uh, using the mathematical expression we have developed. So, this way you can play around with the separation and the phasing and you can generate uh, uh, patterns uh, with different uh, behavior or uh, suiting different requirements. If we go to a larger separation, we increase the separation between the elements, we make it uh, a one wavelength and keep the phasing the same that is uh, they are excited in phase with equal amplitude, but the uh, separation is one wavelength. Then we get a more interesting pattern uh, uh, which is shown here. So, here what one notices is that there are uh, directions of ma maximum radiation uh, which are not just two as we saw previously or not just one, there are four directions in which the radiation is maximum and there is a very simple explanation to that uh, using the arguments we have been uh, providing earlier. In the plane of symmetry, the radiation is interfering constructively and in this plane also, in this direction also uh, because of the separation, the radiation is not experiencing any phase difference and therefore, once again it is constructive interference. That does not happen in some other directions where the interference is destructive. All right. So, this was the behavior of uh, uh, some very simple two element arrays. Now, let us keep in mind for a while this particular system where the phase difference was 180 degrees it can be made out that the there will be changes in the pattern, but the basic nature will not change even if the spacing is changed alright. So, this is the point that I like you to uh, keep in mind before we proceed to the next topic of discussion today which is the Yagi Uda array. The Yagi Uda array was considered to be a very important development uh, when it was proposed uh, around uh, uh, 1930s. Uh, it was proposed by uh, Japanese uh, Uda and uh, it was uh, made known to the uh, scientific community by an American Yagi and therefore, the name Yagi Uda array. The Yagi Uda array is a parasitic array. So, this is uh, an important difference uh, in the Yagi Uda array and the arrays that we have just considered. The arrays that we just considered the simple two element arrays each antenna had an uh, individual separate excitation of its own which means you have to provide a feed network uh, a feed for each antenna and then phase uh, the uh, uh, feeder currents appropriately to get the desired results. So, in those two element arrays each element was driven all right, but in the Yagi Uda array there is only one element which is driven and the other elements derive their excitation through mutual coupling or through induced fields or through induced currents all right. So, therefore, there is one driven element as we shall just see in the examples and other elements are parasitic, they are not driven separately, but it does not mean that if they are not connected to a driver or to a generator they do not have any effect, they have an important effect because they do have induced currents which will depend upon their separation and their size all right 
and therefore, by controlling the separation and the size of the parasitic elements, one can once again uh, so to say engineer the radiation pattern uh, to a desired degree. Because only one element is driven, it becomes a very simple array and therefore, uh, it is a popular low cost antenna okay, and it can provide a, a more directional radiation pattern compared to a single uh, radiating element. All right. Now, as an example, let us consider the following system. What is this system? it consists of two elements. One is the driven element as indicated by provision for connecting a feed and the other is a parasitic element. In this, in this illustrative example, the separation between these two elements is kept very small. All right. And what we are considering is the pattern in a plane which is normal to the axis of these two elements. Okay. That is in the uh, terminology of the dipole antennas, we are considering the H plane pattern. In which plane? Individually these will be isotropic radiators, that is their radiation pattern will be that of a circle. Okay. H plane pattern, a plane which is normal to the antenna axis, where individually these are uniform radiating. We make out the effect or the current that is induced uh, on the parasitic element in the following manner. We say that since the antennas are, uh, since the elements are placed very close together, therefore, the field which is incident on the parasitic element is the field of the uh, the driving element or the driven element, which we call in this case the driver. If we consider that these are made of uh, very high uh, conductivity materials, then the tangential field over this perfect conductor should be 0, total tangential field and therefore, there will be an electric field which will be generated by this parasitic element which should nullify the field which is incident on it that is E parasitic should be equal to the negative of the incident field which is the field due to the driver. So, the parasitic element has a field which is exactly the negative of that of the uh, driver, the driven element and therefore, it becomes a system of two elements like those two dots we showed earlier with a phase difference which is 180 degrees. And one can calculate the overall radiation pattern using the expression we had uh, uh, put down earlier using this separation between the elements and it comes out to be of this form. Okay. In the plane of symmetry, since they are these are out of phase excited elements, there is no radiation otherwise the pattern varies in this manner. So, straight away from a uh, uniform radiation, we have achieved radiation in uh, restricted directions. All right. But this is not the uh, complete story. If we change the dimensions of the parasitic element, it is the same system, all right. one uh, driven element, one parasitic element, but we are changing the length of the driven element. As a result of this, the impedance that this element presents for this driven element is now different and therefore, the phase of the current that is induced on it or the field that it generates is now different from earlier. Since the length is a little more than this and if you consider that this is the resonant length, 
one can work out from simple principles that the uh, uh, phase that will be phase of the uh, current and the field that will be generated because of this will be leading the phase of this element. And therefore, one will get the effect of uh, the uh, cardioid pattern that we got where antenna 1 was lagging in phase or effectively antenna 0 was leading in phase. So, that kind of effect is coming in, but the separation is not exactly lambda by 4 nor is the phase difference exactly 90 degrees because that depends upon the separation and the dimensions. The effect is somewhat like this essentially the radiation in the forward direction if we call this the forward direction towards the driver is enhanced okay. and this enhancement will depend upon the separation and the size. Typically if this is a lambda by 2 dipole or a resonant length dipole which resonant length is uh, in practice slightly less than lambda by 2 because of the uh, field extension beyond the open circuited end and we keep this length somewhat greater than the resonant length then we get this kind of pattern and a parasitic element which uh, uh, is longer <coughs> slightly longer than the resonant length is called a reflector. In some manner the field is being reflected in the forward direction away from this element and the field towards the uh, radi uh, reflector is getting reduced all right. So, this is the kind of effect that a longer so called reflector element has on the radiation pattern. We proceed further from here. And instead of placing the parasitic element behind the driven element, we place it in front, but we still look for the same effect that is the radiation is enhanced in the forward direction and suppressed or reduced in the backward direction and then if we keep the uh, dimensions of this parasitic element such that it is slightly less than the resonant length then the current that is induced in this is going to be lagging in phase compared to the driver element and the overall radiation pattern in the plane normal to the antenna axis that is the H plane pattern is going to be like this. So, once again you see that uh, we may place a parasitic element in front or at the back, but if we choose its dimension suitably the radiation in the forward direction in our notation phi equal to 0 degree direction can be enhanced by choosing the dimensions judiciously. And therefore, to continue this enhancement of radiation in the forward direction, we consider this kind of an array which is a Yagi Uda array. There is one driven element, the center element and there are two parasitic elements, one in front, the other at the back and their dimensions have been suitably chosen. So, that each one enhances radiation in the forward direction, this is slightly less than the resonant length, this is slightly more than the resonant length. Uh, to give you an idea of the kind of lengths that we have in mind here, the resonant length uh, L driver which we want to be uh, exactly half wavelength or to resonate around half a wavelength kind of frequency is typically 0.478 lambda close to lambda by 2, but slightly less. Of course, this particular resonant length uh, depends also upon the thickness of the uh, say conducting rod which is used to make the antenna. That effect is small, but it can change this value slightly. On the other hand, the length of the reflector 
which is expect, uh, required to be slightly greater than this in this particular example that we are considering which is fairly typical is 0.49 lambda and the length of the uh, 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 parasitic element that is in front. This element is called a director because it in some sense directs the radiation in the forward direction uh, is 0.45 lambda. Okay. The example that I am showing in that example the spacing between these elements is still small, but in practice the spacing is of the order of 0 0.15, 0 0.2 lambda. And as you can see all dimensions are related to wavelength, their absolute value is not so important, it is the relative value with respect to the wavelength that matters. For this kind of dimensions and with the spacing uh, equal to uh, in this case 0 0.04 lambda, the pattern that we get is the following. Okay. Uh, the plane in which we are showing it is again the H plane pattern, the plane normal to the antenna axis. So, that in that plane these three elements look like these three dots. Okay. This is the director element, this is the driven element, and this is the uh, uh, reflector element and the pattern that we get is like this. The pattern in the other plane that is the plane in which we are displaying this uh, these elements, the plane containing these antennas will be somewhat different because in that plane these individual elements have a directional somewhat directional radiation pattern. Okay. So, which will multiply the field values that we get on the basis of isotropic radiation patterns and that can be done since the uh, individual radiation pattern is not very complicated. We get uh, a pattern uh, in the plane containing the antennas uh, like this. This is called the H plane pattern and this is the E plane pattern. This plane uh, is parallel to the orientation of the electric field and the other plane is normal to it. And now you cannot uh, mistake this, this is the element that we use uh, so frequently as the antenna for receiving the television signals. There is one uh, difference, the antenna that we use in practice has a center element which is the driven element which is a folded dipole from the a point of view of the considerations we have already discussed. Otherwise, this is the television receiving antenna and only one antenna needs to be connected to the transmission line, uh, only one element, the other two elements do not have any physical connection with that feeder transmission line uh, or the transmission line that connects this receiving antenna to the uh, receiver. Therefore, it is so simple. The <coughs> exact analysis is not so simple because the amplitude of the current that is induced and the phase of the current that is induced depends upon the separation and the dimensions. Okay. But some attempts have been made at that and fairly complete design information is available on the design of uh, this antenna. And even when you buy this kind of antennas from the market you would notice that some antennas perform well, some others do not. So, antennas which conform to these guidelines they will perform better and those that are connected to good quality transmission lines with a proper connection keeping the impedance levels in mind they will perform better others will not. The guidelines are uh, evolved in this manner. The general Yagi Uda array antenna configuration is like this. While we may have 
a number of director elements. The addition of more reflector elements does not help. Okay, so, there is usually one reflector and depending on how much enhancement of the radiation pattern you require in the forward direction, you can add more directors and uh, one can make out that as the number of <coughs> director elements increases, although the pattern will become more and more directional, but they will uh, arise a, a point of diminishing returns. Okay, there will be a saturation in the uh, directionality of the radiation pattern that one can achieve uh, through a given driven element. Okay. So, initially as you add the uh, director elements, the gain uh, or the directionality of the radiation pattern will increase rather rapidly and then this rate of increase will drop and finally, it will saturate to some value. Complete optimization uh, analysis of such a system exists okay. and when you want to optimize this, you will like to uh, have the separations optimized and the dimensions optimized. So, that uh, with a given number of elements you maximize the directionality of the overall radiation pattern all right. So, that kind of theory exists. The results based on such a theory uh, are like this. Okay. Here the directionality of the overall radiation pattern is expressed in terms of uh, an antenna parameter which is called gain which we have not defined here, but has a very simple definition. Uh, right now it is enough to say that as the number of elements increases and it is the number of director elements that is increasing, the uh, gain increases and then it the rate of increase of gain tapers, tapers down and uh, one may have up to 8, 9, 10 director elements and one can have a uh, radiation pattern which is roughly 11, 12 times more directional than the radiation pattern of a single uh, antenna say the driven element. Okay. Uh, so, now we have uh, reached the end of the course. You will recall that in the beginning of the course, we said that uh, electromagnetics deals with the study of electric and magnetic fields, the behavior of these fields, how these are generated or what is the effect of these fields. We identified certain very important phenomena which can be described uh, in terms of fields very conveniently. These phenomena were the uh, phenomena of wave propagation and radiation. So, that has been the uh, main theme of this course. We have studied extensively the wave propagation, taking the vehicle of transmission lines first, then the parallel plane waveguide and finally, the rectangular waveguide. We also saw how we may build resonators using uh, sections of certain lengths from transmission lines or the rectangular waveguides. And finally, the second important phenomenon together with wave uh, propagation that was mentioned that is radiation, we made some very simple considerations regarding how radiation may arise in different structures and then we uh, considered the uh, mathematical framework uh, with the help of which we can uh, calculate the radiation fields from a given structure. And we applied this uh, framework to some very simple antennas, the electrically short antennas and the half wave dipole antenna. Finally, as we have done today, we have considered the effect of putting this kind of antennas together that is forming arrays and we have uh, tried to explain the uh, evolution, the design evolution of the commonly used uh, television receiving antenna. Thank you very much. Thank you.